it's me, Elizabeth, or Nurse Zabe here on YouTube and Instagram if you want to follow me over there. Quick shout out. Um, and I am here with another video for you guys. This one is uh, entitled, as you can read above, how I pumped 50 ounces a day. Uh, and it is going to be tips for exclusive pumping. So these tips can definitely be used by mamas who are putting the baby to the breast and also pumping or just exclusively putting the baby to the breast. But most of them are going to definitely be for moms who are exclusively pumping or pumping a majority of the baby's feeds uh, because our bodies respond differently to the pumps. There's a few things that we can do differently with the pumps than we can do with the baby and I'll, I'll go into those a little bit later. Here's my spiel about breastfeeding. There's a whole argument of breast is best versus fed is best. And here's the bottom line. Breast is the biological norm, okay? Fed is the expectation. We must feed our babies. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If the options are to try and breastfeed it and not work and to feed your baby, obviously feed your baby. But breastfeeding is of the biological norm. It's what our bodies were created to do. Um, and in the perfect world, we'd all be able to breastfeed our babies and we'd all be given tons of lactation support and we'd be given enough maternity leave to establish breastfeeding well and we'd be given proper breaks to pump at work and maintain our breastfeeding relationship with our babies. But we don't live in a perfect world. So you gotta kind of meet in the middle sometimes. Breast is the biological norm. Fed is the expectation, but what is best is when moms are educated, when they are supported, and when their choices are respected. And I respect and support you in any choice that you make on how you would like to feed your baby. First off, I kind of want to get go over um, some things about exclusive pumping, some myths that people like to spread that I just wanna shed some light on. So there are some people, maybe people who are in the healthcare community, people who will be helping you with your babies, who tell you that you can't exclusively pump for a baby, that your, your milk will dry out, that there's no way. And I'm here to tell you that you can definitely exclusively pump from birth for a newborn. You can exclusively feed your baby by pumping. You gotta pump a whole heck of a lot, but you can do it. So with that being said, um, if you aren't latching baby in the hospital, if exclusive pumping isn't something that you come to a little bit later in your uh, breastfeeding relationship out of necessity, then you might need to use either donor milk or formula in the hospital until your milk comes in. Some women do have success with pumping at starting at like 38, 39 weeks with the consent of your doctor. Very important, with the consent of your doctor because pumping can cause contractions. Um, but some women do have success pumping and saving that colostrum to give to baby um, in the hospital. So that can be an option too. But in the very beginning, baby's bellies are super, super, super tiny. Colostrum is super thick, and honestly, the pump is not gonna work great to get it out. So hand expressing, and I will leave my favorite hand expressing video down below from Stanford. Um, so gonna be pumping and hand expressing in the hospital, and you need to do that every two to three hours. Your milk will come in between day three and day five, and again, you are going to need to express every two to three hours, eight to 12 times a day, for the first 12 to 16 weeks until your milk supply regulates. Mine regulated at, at 16 weeks, that's when I was making 45 to 50 ounces a day pretty consistently and because I did have an oversupply that's something else I really need you guys to know 50 ounces a day is a very large oversupply most breastfed babies are going to take between 24 and 32 ounces a day they only need an ounce to an ounce 0.25 of milk for every hour in the day so me pumping 50 ounces a day was was nice I have a deep freezer full of milk but it's not necessary and don't compare yourself to people who have oversupplies and think that you are not enough because you are enough for your baby okay um, and especially if you're breastfeeding and watching this video, pumping 50 ounces a day is not normal. Pumping two to three ounces every two to three hours is totally normal. Sorry, I just need to get that out there because I don't want people to watch this video and think, oh my gosh, I'm only pumping 24 ounces a day. That is perfect, okay? Remember, we're paste bottle feeding our babies and we are not giving them more than an ounce to an ounce 0.25 of milk for every hour 
in the day or every hour that they're away from you if they are going to the breast. But yes, yeah, so going back to, so you're pumping eight to 12 times a day for the first 12 to 16 weeks until you, it stops increasing and you kind of notice that it's steady for like a week or two. Um, and then you know that your milk supply is regulated. That is when you can do the most beautiful, magical thing in the whole world and start dropping pumps. Um, so with exclusive pumping, this is different than breastfeeding. You need to pump for the same amount of time in a 24 hour window, but you can drop pumps and pump for a little bit longer per pump and make up that time. And then, um, depending on your breast storage capacity, which is something you kind of need to figure out too, um, you can go a lot longer in between pumps and still make enough for your baby because your body has kind of regulated. Um, and so once I was making 45 to 50 ounces a day pumping eight times a day at 16 weeks, I was actually able to drop down to five to six pumps a day and maintain that amount of milk. Um, so I was sleeping through the night and not pumping overnight and just pumping every three hours during the day. And it worked out really, really well. And I did that up until Holden was 10 months old. And then I started dropping um, down to four pumps a day, three, two, I did two for the last, month of his life and when I was doing two pumps a day I was making about 24 to 30 ounces of milk a day which was perfect because that's exactly how much he was taking 24 ounces of milk a day um, and then I, I dropped down after that and I can do a video about weaning from the pump if you guys would find that helpful but so what's what what's the takeaway here for the first 12 to 16 weeks you're gonna feel kind of married to your pump the nice thing is you are going to have a pretty small baby who sleeps pretty frequently, so you're going to be able to use that time when baby is sleeping, hopefully, to get your pumps in. Um, you're going to be needing to pump 8 to 12 times a day to mimic how a newborn would feed, and that will set you up to have a really nice, healthy supply or perhaps even an oversupply once baby is 12 to 16 weeks old and your milk supply is kind of regulated. Then you can start dropping pumps based on your breast milk storage capacity, which you can figure out. I'll throw up a chart right here. Which is pretty helpful and I found to be pretty accurate. I have a large breast milk storage capacity. Um, my largest pump that I have ever pumped was I hadn't pumped for 12, 12 hours and I pumped like 25 ounces. So. so, how to make this work? This is a commitment. This is a time commitment. You actually might feel like you have twins. Baby number one and baby number two. Baby number two is your pump. Um, and baby number one is a lot cuter and more snuggly, but you might kind of feel like you have twins and you're going to have to kind of figure out how to get those eight to 12 pumps per day in. And so portability is going to be key. Um, portability is going to look like a lot of different things to a lot of different women. So with this baby, the one that I exclusively pumped for, hold it. Um, I use the Spectra S1 that is, has a battery, a rechargeable battery in it. That was lovely because I could carry this around with me. Um, if you don't have this, you also can get a battery pack. This is for a Medela, but it will work on a Spectra. They use the same voltage um, to be able to pump more portably, um, especially pumping in the car, which I have a video on, life-changing when you are exclusively pumping. Um, some women will have money or have their insurance pay for a Willow. Um, I did have a Willow, or I, I do have one. Um, I actually have tried out the Willow and the LV, and I will be doing a video comparing and contrasting the two. For me personally, um, I did not empty super well with the Willow, but it was good in a pinch when things were crazy at work and I wasn't gonna have a chance to pump. I would use it then. Um, but yeah, portability is gonna be key. What else is key is having a safe place to put baby where you can feed baby um, and pump at the same time. So, uh, a reclining chair can be helpful or I would often sit like this here let me get my camera sit like this have hold in here so that I could practice my pace bottle feeding and pump and how I was able to do that was with a hands-free pumping bra so I will harp on and on and on about hands-free pumping bras they are so key for making pumping 
easier and more efficient. Um, I actually just submitted a grant at work to get all of our moms whose babies end up in our NICU, which is we have a special care nursery, um, hands-free pumping bras to make those times when they're pumping for their baby and they're separated easier. So fingers crossed we get that grant, but hands-free pumping bras are really life-changing because you are able to pump and tend to your baby pump and make breakfast, pump and do all sorts of things. So you've got your portable pump, however that looks for you, and then a hands-free pumping bra. And with the hands-free pumping bra, you are also really going to be able to do hands-on pumping, which is really, really, really important. And studies have shown that you actually can get up to 48% more milk by practicing hands-free pumping. Which, yeah, I was one of those women who I definitely, like, I had to massage my breasts to get all of my milk out. Um, and so I can do a video all about hands-free pumping and, and what to do and how to do it, but I was definitely one of those women who needed to massage to get um, all of the milk out. It also helps increase the fattiness of your milk because fat is sticky and it gets stuck in the ducts, so massaging will help loosen that fat up and get more of the fat that your body's already making into your milk. So hands-free pumping bra and hands-on is gonna be a very, very key. Something else that is going to get you more milk and make things more comfortable is making sure that your flange is properly sized to your breast. I will link down below this awesome ruler that you can print out and test your flange size. And this company you can also send pictures to and they will help properly size your flanges. So I actually was using flanges that were too big when I was pumping with May because I was only pumping at work. It really wasn't that big of a deal, but when I, uh, was able to switch the flanges that were properly sized for me with this pregnancy, um, which is smaller than what came with my pump. It was 21 millimeter instead of a 24, so I had to order it offline. It made things more comfortable and it made me have more milk. So those were both good things that we are looking for uh, when we're exclusively pumping. We want to maximize output and minimize discomfort. You should not have cracked bleeding, uncomfortable nipples while pumping. That is not good, that is not okay. Another thing to keep in mind when you are exclusively pumping, some people think, let's crank this baby up because more is more. If you're uncomfortable, you're going to make less milk. So having it cranked up to the highest level isn't going to give you more milk. Having it comfortable is going to give you more milk. You're gonna want to be changing out your duct bills and your membranes more frequently if you're exclusive pumping than if you are um, putting the baby to breast and only pumping when you're at work. So I just changed my duct bills out the first of every month and that way it was just done. Another thing that you are gonna to wanna to do if you are exclusively pumping and having to pump a ton is have a ton of different parts. So I had three different um, flange sets in rotation and three different bottle sets and so that way I could be pumping and washing and kind of keeping up with things as I went. Um, in my original how to naturally pump more breast milk video I talked about putting your supplies in the fridge. That video I made in 2016, in 2017 the CDC came out and said that you should not do that. Um, some women still do it and I think really what you need to think about is do you have a preemie or a NICU baby, do you have a heart baby, a baby with a compromised immune system definitely you want to be wary of that. Um, I just, I didn't do it this time around just because I was exclusively pumping um, and I just knew that there was more risk of contamination for doing that. So I did wash my pump parts after every single time. I also um, bought a sanitizer mostly because it was a sanitizer and dryer. I will link it down below and it really helped because since I was washing things so frequently and you're supposed to let everything air dry because wiping with paper towels can actually introduce uh, bacteria that the sanitizer would actually dry things for me and sanitize. So I was sanitizing a little bit more than I probably needed to be doing. The CDC recommends once a day. Um, I would probably do like once a week if I wasn't using the sanitizer for its drying purposes. Another thing that I think makes exclusive pumping easier and more bearable and just better in general is finding your tribe. Um, so that might be an exclusive pumping Facebook group for you. That might be um, a website, exclusivepumping.com is a really helpful website with really good information on it. Um, and I will link that website down below as well. Another thing that you might find really helpful is another mama who's done it because it's not an easy thing to do. But when the options are triple feeding your baby, putting the baby to the breast and then pumping and giving them that milk, um, 
and being scared and frustrated and things not working out as you would plan, sometimes exclusive pumping is the easier option. If they, if we're not in that perfect world that I wish we all lived in um, and baby is not breastfeeding well, exclusive pumping can be the decision that is really hard to make at the time because that's probably not what you wanted to do, um, but it can make things a lot easier, especially if you've got your tribe. So I was part of a Facebook group a couple of them actually about exclusive pumping. I learned a lot there. And I have a really amazing friend who exclusively pumped for her second child and kind of went through the same thing that I went through where she breastfed her first one really easily. Um, and she was just, she is a labor and delivery nurse as well and just an amazing person. And I'm like tearing up talking about this, but she was somebody who really helped me make the decision. This is what I'm gonna do. And she was just a good person to sound sound things off on and just also just a, a great friend and support person who's somebody who's done it because it is a difficult thing to do and when you are doing something that's difficult a lot of people around you will kind of say you know why don't you do something that's a little bit easier and giving formula is easier but when giving your baby breast milk is what you really want to be doing um then that's what you want to work on doing and so that's you know Holden wasn't breastfeeding well and I had a, a lot of postpartum depression about it related to it directly affected by his breastfeeding and so when we decided to exclusively pump that was when um I had to pick my mental health over that picture of what I thought our breastfeeding relationship was going to be and I 100% stand behind that decision but it still was hard so having a tribe having people who understand why you're doing something that is more difficult than just giving formula is going to be really helpful so number 10 this one is important and this is one that I want to go out to all of you mamas out there who are exclusively pumping who are pumping at work who are just feeling this burden of having to pump to supply your baby with milk. You're not having the breastfeeding relationship that you hope that you would. Those beautiful portraits of mothers breastfeeding their babies from the Renaissance ages. Not so much what you're feeling. It is hard work. It is worth it. You can do it. You can supply your baby with the very best thing that you can. Um, and for some people that's breast milk and for some people that's that's formula but the very best thing that you can the thing that you want to supply them with if it is exclusive pumping you can do it and I want you guys to know to never quit on your worst day always muscle through that very worst day and when you're on the other side of it if you still want to quit that's okay um, but if you also want to drop pumps um, with the knowledge that yes you might have to give formula but if giving formula is what it takes to preserve your mental health, I know that that is the right decision for you. And ex if exclusive pumping was what you needed to do for your mental health, then I know that that was the right decision for you too. Um, and I hope that you have found support in those around you. And if those around you aren't giving you the support that you need, then go find people who will. Because they are out there and at the end of the day, However you choose to feed your baby, in the grand scheme of things, the most important thing that you need to give them is love. Anyway, whoo, cheese factor times a thousand. Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely leave any comments uh, or concerns that you have down below and I'll do my best to respond to all the comments. Bye guys.